And is it, uh, Kristen, she did a summary about this, didn't she, for the SBN conference? Oh, look, uh, we we did do, uh, do a presentation, the combined group of us who um, operate uh, under Audiobooks Radio. And at the Small Press Network conference, mm. uh, the Small Publishers conference in November last year, which was a lot of fun um, and uh, very exciting. You know, it, it makes you realise how much you know, how much information you've gathered. Uh, over the past year, but Kristen's little segment is fantastic, and we'll put it up and put a link uh, when you receive this newsletter because it gave, gives an overview of what the audiobook landscape is like over the last 12 months. She's an amazing researcher, that master's degree. She's an incredible <laughs> rounder. I am, I am astounded by her work. Yeah, and as somebody who's got qualifications from New York and um, is, uh, you know, a mum and uh, a, a householder, a librarian and a dramaturg. An all-round great person. An all-round great person. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, Very yeah. funny too. Yes. <laughs> so, I, think we, I think you need it um, in, uh, in, in this creative and writing world. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of drama and there's a lot of um, really uh, critical moments and there's a lot of learning curve in our area so to have a good sense of humor comes to you know it's pretty good yeah <laughs> serves um, you well and yeah especially good I, I think Kristen's so warm and we have meetings with various stakeholders and, and having her there is fantastic and yeah. at the moment there's a few meetings that we're having with publishers and yeah. Got some lined up, some that have happened, and that's yeah. very exciting for you know perhaps where yeah. audiobooks radio was going for the year. Yeah, like last year we kept on threatening to launch, you know, and we never, <laughs> <laughs> and we were too busy. And I just was looking at you know our LinkedIn and our you know Facebook and a, a infant Instagram going. We've done nothing. We've done nothing because it, we really yeah. have just been delivering, delivering and breaking the back of of you know some innovative work we've done innovative work with the academic book and with a, a whole book we with memoir we in three voices and you know yeah. uh, stuff like that so fiction academic work anthologies the anthologies and yeah mostly you know this work has come about word of mouth so yeah it, it was a surprise and not a surprise uh, to be approached by a wonderful publisher whose name I can't mention yet because we haven't you know sewn up any deals but um, having a first uh, a meeting instigated by them just through word of mouth again yeah. about you know collaborating on some books of their clients so that'd be more like a b2b mm. I, I imagine situation rather than straight with the author uh, and explain explain to them what our system is and they, they were wonderful. I, th I think this is the great thing about people who've been in the publishing sector for a long time and know their field and know, uh, you know, have got a wonderful reputation and to be able to sort of um, be able to meet them on their terms and say, they say, we know nothing about audiobooks. Tell us, just inform us. And uh, to be able to share that information mm -hmm. and be able to see how we can add to their business. Uh, because they would then be able to, um, you know, offer that extra platform, you know, for for their authors. Yeah. yeah. And, and another meeting soon with a publisher we won't mention who, uh, Sydney based, but renowned for doing a lot of international translations. So yeah. interesting to see what happens there. But uh, what I'm liking is how we're moving into this space now with building rapport with publishers. Yeah. But a lot of the history for audiobooks radio has been with the community radio sector. Yeah. So I always acknowledge yeah. community radio. Community radio has, yeah, I've worked there for many, many years, and it actually spawned the whole idea yeah. of audiobooks because Vision Australia, for instance, which was part of the network that I worked with for mm. over 10 years, um, has been creating audiobooks for the vision impaired community. <laughs> What's a, a non-binary term? They are the leaders. They are the leaders. They are the leaders, are the leaders. Are the leaders of, of audiobooks in Australia. However, their library is tightly held. It's only accessible by people who are bona fide um, vision impaired. And they have a copyright kind of free freebie. That they The Marrakesh Treaty, which, you know, is an, uh, a treaty that allows 
uh, community radio, visions and organisations like Vision Australia to audio book any book in the world free of copyright mm. charges so that they can offer that then to their people. So that's why the rules are so tight. But learning from them, uh, you know, what's possible, uh, you know, in terms of um, being able to use narrators, being able to use uh, audio engineers, being able to use studios is something that the community radio was then able to create a platform for in terms of seeding this idea of uh, an audio book business. And we recently, mm -hmm. well, uh, I've used uh, studios uh, certainly for the last two years while I was in community radio. And more recently, now that we're working commercially, uh, I have used uh, Eastside Radio mm -hmm. Studios. And uh, just a great experience for everyone concerned. You know, people who were volunteers within the community radio sector were able to be offered jobs, uh, you know, paid jobs, uh, which is always, not, always nice. And those people who have been volunteering for a long time, they're a joy to work with, you yeah. know, because they... Got they committed can... and passionate and... Skilled. <laughs> it's very skilled, very talented, and just a lot of... There's been a lot of support for yeah. the business. And, yeah. you know, just as, you know, yeah. we support community radio, it's just yeah. a nice little synergy going on. Yeah, absolutely. And they go the extra mile mm. you know so there's none of this oh you know kind of like slicing up or you know it's just really lovely yeah. to to work with them and working with tony smythe was just a joy yeah. you know he's like so what's difficult about that there's no difficulty here that i see so let's just make it happen and if we did have issues immediately addressed so and because i've worked in community radio it was not it was easy for me to navigate that whole area so yeah. it's a it's a natural synergy i'm hoping that we do that a lot more yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do a reset we will do a reach out to community radio soon we to will. talk about one of the last stories we did for the year which was the senior stories volume eight volume eight senior yeah. stories department of communities and justice yeah. um was finished it was like one of those screaming, you know, sliding to last base <laughs> right at the last minute. Um, and everything was done. 120 stories. Made the deadline. Made the deadline. <laughs> 12 of those stories in 11 languages. Uh, 14 narrators. Um, and all uploaded yeah. um, onto the website for Department of Community and Justice. And I would like to talk about that little journey because yeah. I know when we first started talking with you know the project manager at DCJ they really wanted this year for the book to go up on audible mm. for instance and other platforms so that it could be easily accessible it's not it's not easy to access stories and audio off a person's web off a company's website and i think they were receiving just a little bit of you know can we make this available more widely um and we came across some interesting problems, didn't we? Yeah, well, you know, when you face a bureaucracy with the rules of a very large institution, like Audible, you sometimes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes don't marry up as well as you'd hope they will, well, even though intentions are good on both sides. <laughs> well, th there was no clash. There was just a kind of dissonance of missions. Yeah. So making it sound way more complicated than it is. But the issue is this. A government department wants that book to be made available for free. Um, sounds nice. It sounds, sounds, nice. Nice. It sounds simple. <laughs> you think that was simple. Is it possible? No, not on any of the book, audio book sales platforms throughout mm. the world. And we did, We I reached out, like if anyone's listening to this and says, oh, she's crazy, she hasn't sought this, tell me, contact me, because I want to know. Uh, we did as much research as possible. No sales platform will upload a book onto their vehicle for free. And I can understand that. If you've ever had an audible book, that is a very sophisticated piece of machinery. Yeah. And it makes it very easy to navigate an audio book. Um, so that makes it uh, 
hard for them to to sell a book for free because all they're uploading it for they don't charge for the upload mm -hmm.